Ms. Mary Ellen Stanick, Vice Chair, Marquette University Board of Trustees. Stanick. Koki Roberts is truly a distinguished journalist, broadcaster, and author. In her work, she has exercised a significant role in American public life as Chief Congressional Analyst for ABC News and Senior News Analyst for National Public Radio, she has distinguished herself as one of our nation's leading political analysts and commentators. Ms. Roberts' reporting provides a unique and insightful perspective into the workings of the United States Congress and the federal government. Her reporting has been recognized by her peers with numerous awards, including an Emmy and the prestigious Edward R. Murrow Award. Her most recent book, Founding Mothers, The Women Who Raised Our Nation, is a fascinating account of the important role women played during the Revolutionary War in writing the Constitution and in founding the American nation. Marquette University admires and respects Ms. Roberts' dedication to democratic values and to her family. That she is a role model for our graduates is made evident, particularly by her commitment to excellence in journalism, her care and concern for her fellow human beings, her passion for service to others, and her kind and generous spirit. Because of her excellence as a journalist, broadcaster, and author, and because of her commitment to the ethical values which, we ha which have governed all of her work, Reverend President, I hereby recommend Koki Roberts for the Marquette University degree, Doctor of Laws, honoris causa. Let me invite the, uh, those who just received the honorary degrees to please stand. <laughs> Reverend George Coyne of the Society of Jesus, Congressman Jerry Kletchka, Koki Roberts, Richard Tierling, Dr. Isaiah Warner, by the power vested in me by the state of Wisconsin and the trustees of Marquette University, I hereby confer upon you the degrees of Doctor of Science and Doctor of Laws honoris causa. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, I present Dr. Koki Roberts political commentator for ABC News, who will deliver the commencement address. Dr. Roberts. Well, thank you so much. I'm thrilled to be here with all of you graduates. Uh, it's here. You've made it. The day has arrived. I'm also pleased to be with my fellow honorees um, and to be standing at a lectern uh, where Barbara Bush stood not too long ago, uh, giving this graduating address. She is, of course, by Laura Bush, called The Enforcer, uh, <laughs> which is her reputation in the family. I'm also really glad to be at a Jesuit event that I am not paying for. Uh, <laughs> doesn't happen very often, and um, and it's a treat to be here at this one. My uncle was a Jesuit, so you can see from all of my life, this has been, um, been something that you have to be wary about. I also um, uh, have spent, of course, a great deal of time covering the uh, politicians who are Jesuit graduates. 
And there's a little something for everyone there, you know, from Bill Clinton to Clarence Thomas, uh, from Jerry Brown to Pat Buchanan, from Pat Leahy to Bill Bennett, and um, of course, John McLaughlin. Uh, so it's, um, you know, it's quite a collection. Uh, I must say my personal favorite among the, um, the politicians of the Jesuit graduations is um, Tip O'Neill, who of course was the longtime Speaker of the House, but, and was a wonderful man and a lovely man, but I'm, I remain eternally grateful to him because he is the person who told the only joke I can ever remember. So it's my one joke, which you were about to hear. Um, it is a joke that starts the way so many do, of the great and good man that dies and gets to heaven and he arrives at the pearly gates. And St. Peter says, well, you have been a good son of Holy Mother Church. Uh, you get a wish. And the guy says, great, I get a wish. I want to meet the Blessed Mother. So in he goes, he meets Mary. And uh, she says, I understand you've always wanted to meet me. He says, yes. I have something I've been wanting to ask you all of my life. Over all those centuries, and all that art, and all those stained glass windows, in all those sculptures, in all those paintings, any time you're holding the baby Jesus, you look sad. Why? She said, I wanted a girl. <laughs> I promise you, you will never be able to look at a Madonna and child again. <laughs> I also um, am personally grateful to Marquette, uh, aside from its Jesuitness, for the specific fact of Marquette, because uh, the oncologist who saved my life uh, went here to school. And, uh, and Dr. Zujewski, her daughter is here now, uh, Dr. Joanne Sujewski told me that Marquette made her what she is today, a warrior against cancer. <laughs> I'm sorry, trustees, I couldn't help it. Uh, it's and I promise you, I will not do what last year's commencement speaker did, is offer you a, a million or two million, I'm confused about that, on uh, to, to change the name back. In fact, I'll be happy for Carfare Home. But, um, and I, I know this is a, a somewhat painful issue, you know. It's, I hear it from politicians all the time. You don't notice all the good things we're doing. You only pay attention to silly stuff like this. I just had a conversation with Tom DeLay the other day, and uh, <laughs> I, um, but uh, I have to say I, I'm personally happy because um, I, um, I showed up as a result of, of your tribulations with the name on the sports page of the New York Times. My name, that would have never happened otherwise. Um, and I have gotten some wonderful emails um, about this. Um, uh, one uh, suggested that you should call yourselves the Harleys, which I think my fellow honoree, Mr. Tierlink, would be uh, very happy about. Uh, the one that I heard on All Things Considered that I thought was quite wonderful was the Jumpin' Jesuits, um, <laughs> which, you know, given the new regime in Rome, could be the case. They could be jumping a lot in the days to come. <laughs> Um, but um, I, uh, I, uh, I will leave that now and let you all work this out yourselves. But um, I do want to talk to you today about uh, politics and politicians. Now, uh, not just those who have graduated from Jesuit schools, um, uh, and not just my fellow honoree, uh, Jerry Klitschko. But um, I, uh, I grew up as the child of politicians, so I have a bias, both my father and mother uh, my father, the brother of the Jesuit, um, were in uh, uh, Congress uh, for many years. My father for 32 years, and then he was lost in a plane crash, and my mother uh, was elected to take his seat, and she served for nine terms. 
Uh, and then she, she retired um, and discovered that was exceptionally hard work. Um, so she took a new job in a new country in 1997 when she was 81 years old. And uh, it was the job of, of being the United States Ambassador to the Vatican, uh, which was quite wonderful, except that uh, what happened in this country happened and she found herself representing Bill Clinton to the Pope. Now, it was a challenge, and uh, if anybody could do it, uh, my mother could, uh, but I'm happy to tell you she is now uh, safely back on Bourbon Street in New Orleans, which is where she lives. Um, she is 89 years old, and she lives by herself on Bourbon Street. And if you have been to Bourbon Street, you've been to my mother's house. It's not like out someplace nice, you know. Um, in fact, when the children were small and would walk past the strippers and the other neighbors, I would say through the woods and over the hills to grandmother's house we go. <laughs> and then she moved from Bourbon Street to the Vatican, and I teased her that the costumes didn't change. It was, it was still guys in dresses, you know, but... Um, <laughs> I was just back for the funeral of the Pope, and with the cardinals all there, their petticoats. It's quite wonderful. Um, but I, uh, therefore, I, I do, um, I do care about politics and politicians, and I want to talk to you about the importance of public service, particularly at this time. Uh, how much we need your now very valuable talents uh, in public service in this country. Uh, maybe we've never needed them more, uh, to have graduates with the uh, Jesuit values of social justice coming into public life. I was in my hometown of New Orleans yesterday and I noticed a poster in the airport uh, advertising Loyola University there and it said SJ, social justice. And um, I think that uh, those, those values are so important to bring into public service today. I particularly hope that those of you in the law school who have specialized in dispute management or dispute resolution would join us because um, the situation is, is not good. You keep hearing, I know, that it is more partisan than it's ever been uh, and that it lacks civility. At President Reagan's funeral, that's everybody who came back kept talking about that. Uh, that the civility that was there when they were there is just gone. And, uh, and that's true. Though that partisanship is greater, and that lack of civility is greater than it has been really probably at any time in our history since the 19th century. And you know, people will say, well, yeah, in the 19th century, they used to cane people on the floor of the Senate. But uh, that was in the lead up to the Civil War. And, uh, and as a failure of politics at that time, because people were so unable to come together, um, we went to war. It's not exactly a period that I think we want to emulate. I know that the idea of, of going into politics is not always a popular idea, and that politicians are not the most popular of people. And uh, there's a whole lot of reasons for that. Uh, part of it is our fault in the media, because we do focus on the negative way too often. Uh, part of it is uh, the politicians' faults themselves, because they often run against the institutions in which they serve. Part of it is our faults as voters, because when people try to lead, often we won't let them. We punish them immediately. Uh, but I think that there has also been a very dangerous a atmosphere in the country of, of denigrating the professional politician. Those words are somehow considered evil together, professional politician. And you know, to denigrate the professional is to denigrate the profession. Uh, we demand professional doctors and respect the practice of medicine. Uh, we expect, certainly, professional bridge builders and respect the art of engineering. Uh, to say that only amateurs, non-professionals, 
should be governing us is to show a basic disrespect for government. And as I say, while that sentiment has been popular in recent years, I think that it is extremely dangerous. Uh, nothing in this country, we have nothing that binds us together. We have no common ethnicity. We have no common history. We have no common religion. We don't even have a common language anymore. Nothing binds us together except our government. And if you look at what's happening in the rest of the world with the ethnic and religious conflicts, you see what a miracle this nation, with all of its diversity, is. And, uh, and it is because of the institution that the Constitution, that one great document that, that glues us together as a nation and the institutions it created uh, have the effect that they have had over the centuries uh, have been the reason that we are a country that can come together. And it's all the institutions created by the Constitution, the executive, the judiciary, and the Congress uh, that are part of the bringing us together. In fact, for those of you who remember your Latin, um, <coughs> Congress means coming together. And uh, I think that to have a disrespect for it is to uh, really be a recipe for disunion, the kind of disunion that we see in the rest of the world. You know, um, uh, more than 170 years ago, when Alexis de Tocqueville was wandering around the country trying to figure it out, he wrote about this question of how could America be a country when these people are so different from each other? And of course, we were much less different then than we are now. And uh, he couldn't figure out how we could form a nation. But then he finally decided and he said, it is because everyone in his sphere takes an active part in the government of society. The cares of politics engross a prominent place in the occupations of a citizen in the United States. Even the women frequently attend public meetings and listen to political harangues as a recreation from their household labors. Well, <laughs> of course, now women are running those meetings, I'm happy to say. And, uh, and I think that, um, I, I, I remember reading a wonderful quotation from a woman who did run for office saying, I either had to run for office or stop complaining, and I knew I couldn't stop complaining. <laughs> but the fact is that now that you have the influx of women and minorities into elective office is an even greater reason to uh, have respect for them. These are not institutions closed off to segments of the American populace anymore. And, uh, and that was a result of a great deal of effort, but it also should, should have the effect of uh, giving you a sense of the importance of this kind of public service. Uh, I know that your own representative, uh, graduate of Marquette University, uh, certainly understands that, Congresswoman Gwen Moore, who uh, learned the hard way what it was like to get an education, support a family, and is now trying to give back through public service. And of course, service is what it's all about. And this institution has a wonderful tradition of service. And in all of your lives, you will give service in one way or another. The engineers and scientists among you, like Dr. Coyne and uh, D Father Coyne and Dr. Warner, uh, will improve all of our lives. Those of you in the humanities can enrich all of our lives. Those of you in communications and teaching can inform all of our lives. Uh, those of you in the healthcare professions uh, can enable all of our lives. Uh, those of you in biz business can enhance our lives. And those of you who are mentors like Mr. Tierlink and Dr. Warner can guide all of our lives. But as you go forth from this wonderful place and look at the life ahead, let me commend the particular kind of service that Congressman Kletchka 
represents. Public service, it holds such an important place in our history as a nation. It is the thing that brings us together and keeps us together as a country. It's tough work, but you are now Marquette graduates. You can do it. Go out there into the fray. Thank you.